this is my first time giving out this kind of talk, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm trying to give my best. Uh, so the topic for today is accessibility in Android uh, and in Jetpack Compose. Uh, so let's start with it. All right. Uh, this is going to be the like the, the summary of everything that's going to be uh, about today. Uh, the, we are going to start with the importance of accessibility. Uh, how's that TalkBack works? I don't know if someone of you has already uh, worked with TalkBack or activated in their phones. So that's a pretty big uh, deal in accessibility. The important rules about good accessibility, the types of components in using accessibility in TalkBack. And lastly, we're going to show a live demo about the implementation and difference about accessibility. So any, uh, anyone, uh, do you have an idea or have you worked with accessibility that you can share with us? Yes, you can use chat or just unmute and ask. Yeah. Or just feel comment, free. yeah. <laughs> anyway, don't worry if it, if it is your first time uh, working with accessibility or seeing it. Uh, all right. Accessibility might be yeah. uh, explained as uh, how UI facilitates uh, uh, use for people who have like maybe some uh, challenges uh, like visual impairment or like other challenges. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. It it is it contains a lot of that. So yeah, pretty good answer. Okay, thank thank you a lot for, for, for uh all right. So yeah, basically the importance of accessibility. Uh, accessibility basically gives us the well ability to enable all types of user to interact with software or in this case mobile applications. Uh for me, I started with mobile development because I used to uh, work with uh, basic console applications in my desktop. And when I did my first mobile application, I, I think it was awesome to handle, uh, I mean, almost everyone has their phones in every time. So mobile application is a big deal here and now. And like almost everyone has a mobile application and they use like Facebook, Instagram, that kind of stuff of mobile thing. So us as developers, we don't really admit, at least when I started, I just made things work and I didn't like uh, know that accessibility was available and it was real difficult for people with different uh, abilities or disabilities to to kind of see like the components of our, our screen. So yeah, as you said, uh, it's a way to transform our screen and unite components into something everyone can see. Uh, I don't know, we, we usually deal with text, buttons, images, but we don't really like, uh, we assume that everyone and can already interact with our app and manage all the different uh, features available. But uh, sometimes we, we need to think out of the box and also uh, have different approaches for people with different uh, abilities or disabilities, as I said. Uh, yeah, yeah. Remarking manages inclusivity and also being available to all users, regardless their abilities or disabilities. And well, also makes our app uh, more usable to a, a wider uh, market of people. And this is another topic that is not going to be re really covered in here, but also helps our apps to be tested uh, with the content description that we gave to the components. I'm going to explain a little bit more in detail in the demo, but that's a, a good uh, thing to, to notice. So what is TalkBack? Has anyone of you worked with TalkBack or interacted with it? Yep, work right. with that on an everyday basis. Yeah, all right, perfect. So now I seem you are already very familiar with it. So yeah, basically for those that don't know it, TalkBack, it's a screen reading accessibility 
uh, already embedded in the Android devices that help us to describe the content of the screen to the user. As it says, it's designed to assist people who are blind or vis vis visually impaired. Uh, it provides feedback and it describes the state of the text components and everything that we we gave, we give context to it. Uh, and yeah, when the talkback is uh, enabled, the device will read aloud the text buttons and other elements. So basically, it's our it's going to be like our eyes describing uh, what is happening in, in our screen. So these are rules about good accessibility. Uh, so understanding what is good accessibility, um, I'm going to start with the last point, which I think it's the most important in this part for uh, not uh, being so harsh and uh, too like perfectionist. So basically, accessibility is an ongoing process. We can really give perfect accessibility at the first uh, time or almost never. Uh, sometimes it requires feedback. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, uh, try and error and basically like being advancing from zero to 100, I will say that um, we, we, we provide the best experience uh, little by little to accessibility in our apps. So uh, the rules I like to follow when I'm working with accessibility is to use the scripted content uh, because I don't know, sometimes at least when I started doing Android apps, uh, sometimes the descriptions that I uh, used to use was like, I don't know, some test uh, description or not really meaningful descriptions. And now that I have dealing more with accessibility, uh, I noticed that that this, this descriptive content, it's everything when working with accessibility. Uh, the focus order. The focus order uh, means we, that we need to design our UI in order to have meaning uh, to the talkback, to not be jumping from one item to another without any kind of uh, like logic. So we need to really focus on, on how to we construct things and how they display into the UI. Uh, we need to, uh, to provide alternatives for media. For example, if we are uh, displaying a lot of images or a lot of uh, media content, uh, it's a, a good, uh, it's a, the correct way is to, to provide a lot of alternatives for media because, I mean, images are very uh, difficult for people that cannot really see in, I don't know, for one example, and we have, and we, if we provide uh, text descriptions and many more descriptive things to the media, it's going to be a lot easier to the user to, to understand what is happening in, in our screen, to have uh, responsive layouts. Responsive layouts are always uh, difficult with accessibility because we users are, uh, I don't know, uh, we are used to interact with the screen, like playing with it, moving it around, swiping, scrolling. And for accessibility, it's uh, we need to really make the user know that the layout is uh, they doing some kind of stuff like uh, changing sizes in some uh, items, doing swipes, scrolling, that kind of stuff. Uh, a very important thing is avoid uh, playing auto media. I don't think it's very usual in mobile apps, but for example, in web, I know many of us have entered to uh, websites that uh, start playing video or um, audio right away. And it's confusing. Sometimes you have uh, several tabs open and when the when the tab is starting to play media, it's, it's confusing. It's uh, it's it's I mean it's not recommended to do things automatically and with accessibility it's to, uh, totally um, like better to avoid it. Uh, use the correct semantic elements. Uh, we are going to see semantics in a more uh, more specifically into the demo. But yeah, basically the semantics is a description of our components that we can give it a lot of. Uh, metadata, like data about the data for the element we are going to to show. 
the text and size and construct. I think this is for, I mean, it applies to every UI. Like we don't really want to have like mm, too little, too, too big and uh, the incorrect selection of colors. And yeah, the last point that it's the one that I first about that don't worry about being perfect about accessibility the first time. It is an ongoing process and by feedback and by practicing, you can do your apps totally uh, good at accessibility. So this is the type of components and concepts that we are going to uh, be dealing with Jetpack Compose and, and accessibility. So uh, basically the semantics, as I talked with you, is the structural information defines the interaction between the components in the UI with the user. So don't worry about uh, all of this. I'm going to, you're going to see in, in the demo, but just, just to have a little idea. The focus management, it's basically how the talkback uh, navigate, navigates during our a screen, such as our touch, our keyboard. There are different types of focus management. But yeah, basically it's that. The labels or descriptions, it's the information that we provide to the client. Uh, for example, if you have an image, uh, you can give it a description and that basically says to the talkback what is, what is being shown in the UI. Also, we can create our own descriptions or labels. For example, if you have a, a big amount of, de uh, of text that you don't want the talkback to read aloud and to confuse the user, you can provide your own description and that's the one that the talkback is going to, to use uh, to inform the user what's happening in the state. Uh, as we can define it here, uh, such as toggle, mark, checked. Uh, it, it is basically used for components that uh, need to hold a current uh, state, such as checkboxes and that kind of stuff, that it's very important to provide uh, the feedback to the user, the current um, state and what is happening with the with the component merging uh, this is a very important thing in accessibility with compose uh you're going to see in the demo why uh so basically the merging allows us to choose the level of granularity of the component if we one can have like many different components uh reading their own kind of state or if we merge all of them and we provide our own custom uh, interactions to it. Uh, the custom actions are to simplify the usage of available functionality, uh, such as um, I don't know, if we have a lot of different composables together, we can create our own custom, custom actions in order to make the navigation easier to the user and the headings and roles. It's basically providing information to the talkback about if the, the info displaying is a bottom, is a heading, is a text, is a text. So uh, all of the components in in, in compose uh, need to have their own behavior and need to be used uh, correctly in order to not confuse the user while using talkback. So we are in now in the fun part that is going to show everything that we talk about it and give it a more concise example. All right, so basically I'm going to share my, my phone screen and let's start with it. Are you guys able to see my phone? Yep. All right, so basically, uh, I don't know, maybe I, I think it's easier to show the, code first and then what it does. So basically we have two different uh, components in here. One that does not have merged and one that it's it has a merge. So what is the merge? Basically it's only, is this one basically. These are the two boxes. This is the one that is not merged and this is the one that has merged nodes. As you can see, it's only uh, the, the, the dumb example of a profile text with a icon button uh a heading and uh the the user profile info 
So basically, this is a normal kind of composable without any regarding for accessibility. We can see that we only have our box, our rows, our images, columns, and text buttons. So if I try to uh, activate TalkBack in this, so I'm going to do that right away. You can see here in the bottom is in the screen what is happening. So basically, the description is important because now the talkback knows what to read aloud. So it says image description, which is basically what I'm setting here to appear. If I put null into this image, it's going to be totally ignored by the talkback and it's going to not be in read aloud. And this is the part that I was going to, uh, I was, this is the focus. If I swipe to the right of my phone, it's going to change to the uh, next uh, note or item available in the screen. So if I start swiping around, Extra you can see that I'm going like Drop. item by item. Profile text. So this is the profile text, drawable the drawable icons. It says a button, double tap to, double activate. Tap to activate. This is what I was uh, talking about the roles, like for buttons, uh, if TalkBack this, uh, detects that it's dealing with a button, it automatically attaches the double double tap to toggle to inform, to inform the user that he can, that he's in the presence of a button and he can like click it and do stuff. But for what is important about merging, this is extra the one that is merged. Text we can see that it extra text concatenates the image description, the profile text, and the extra description in a single, I don't know, a single row. And now it only reads the button. So that we can see the difference between this one and this one. What is sometimes important to merge notes and make everything more like not being read one by one? Imagine this kind of stuff in, a, I don't know, like a lazy column or a secular view, some kind of stuff. Imagine the user being through the all this whole information for every item. Like it's going to be very tiring, very confusing. And sometimes it's better to only attach the important information into the into the into a talk back and the user now can be in like uh scrolling uh one by one and more easily between the important information and the button instead of being jumping from uh item from item um so yeah this is the one that it's like totally made with comp with compose without regarding for accessibility and this is the one that we are going to focus on. So as you can see, it's basically the same comp the same composable. It just has a different, uh, in the modifier, we can attach semantics, which is the extra description that we can provide to our talkback. So yeah, uh, we can see that I gave it the Boolean value to merge the sentence to true. So that's the part uh, that merges the all these things inside the row and basically makes it one one composable it will say to the to the talkback uh, we can attach content description to the the talkback when we merge the sentence is going to take all the all the available descriptions and is going to be read them aloud but also we can make uh, attach text to the to the talkback and it's going to be Sorry, it's going to be read aloud. So yeah, it's going to say, it's going to inform about the image description, it's going to inform about the profile text, the extra text description, but also it's going to attach at first uh, this part. As we can see in here, is going to read everything that we provided and, and all the information about the notes. There's another possibility, which is this one. So basically, we can use this clear and set semantics. Clear and set semantics, basically, what it does is it totally erases the, the current information about accessibility in here. And it's only going to use the content description that we provide. So it's going to forget about this. It's going to forget about this. And it's going to forget this. So let me compile it real quick. Oh. 
Page com debug. AL double tap image description. As you can see now, extra our own custom text. It only reads our own custom text and it doesn't care about anything inside of the of the comp component, I will say. And now the buttons. So yeah. Basically, uh, we can manage if we want to to only attach some extra information, or even it's not necessary to attach extra information. If the inform the information provided inside those compulsive, it's like very clear and it's what it wants, uh, you can leave it like that, or you can clear all the semantics already attached and make your own custom description. Uh, all right, so now the next part. Yeah. The traversal yes. order. So um, for TalkBack, focus is very important. For example, you can see two different uh, colors in here. Uh, that is because we basically have two very simple composables. We have a row, which inside has a column. The column has two text. The which labels uh, with labels first and second. So this is the one painted in light gray. So it's these ones that are uh, basically um, uh, in the same column. And inside the col outside of the scope of the column, we have a third uh, text, which is only like existing inside of the row. So this is the one painted in cyan because of the row. So for checkback, the way it's going to read it, it's, it starts from left to right uh, in this case. So if I switch to the next note, third. it's going to be reading the third note. And second. at last, it's going to be to the second uh, text. So sometimes we don't really want that because we have to, we want to prioritize the first to finish with the, with the column and then jump to everything outside of our scope. So imagine we have in here a profile text and here we have a button to save it. But in this is only like a content description regarding the state of these two. There are a lot of examples, but I wanted to make it very clear and very simple to not confuse you. So the second composable, what it does is nice. the talkback first focus to the, <laughs> to the first uh, item, second. then jumps to the second one. And lastly, third. to the third one. So the, third, third, first. The, the, the behavior of it, it's totally third. different. As you second. can see, first, second. it, it uh, first finishes with the, with the same kind of um, column and then jumps to the one outside of the column. That can be done with uh, a simple modifier called, uh, as you can see, we, we attach the semantics to it. And we activate the, the flag that says is traversal group. Traversal group basically means that we, we care about uh, first things being read it by the talkback in, uh, in the way that they are constructed. Like for example, first uh, finish with the column and at last when the column is uh, finished, jump to the outside components. Uh, you can really play with it. There's a lot of possibilities in here. For example, you could have uh, text and in here you could have a floating action button. And instead of waiting to the user to jump from all the components until getting into the floating action button, you can directly go to the action button. And I don't know, there are plenty of possibilities using this. This is a little bit more new, so you will have, uh, you need uh, this, uh, at least this version of Compose, uh, because I think it came out like in June or something like that. But yeah, uh, you can do a lot of stuff with this. And last, we have this. Yeah. We have the roles. The roles. Image description image. Well, you can see that I reuse basically the same composable, but with a lot of more text. So basically it's the same. Profile text heading. It says, this is the important image part. As you image. can see, it, it now image says text. that is a heading. heading. The profile text in the last one, the head, the, it only said profile text because it was the information provided to the talkback. But now it's inform, informing about a heading. 
And if I jump to the next one, Lauren it's going to read all this uh, long text image. that for accessibility can be really tiring to start jumping from item to item and reading like real long uh, con uh, content. It's, it's difficult to to hear by the talk, but it's difficult to manage. It's difficult to remember. So sometimes we want to ignore it. So this is the second like uh, possibility. We can have the same profile our profile text okay. heading. And as you can see, if I jump to the next note, it's going to be totally ignored by the talkback. And it's Off going to be uh, focusing on the on the checkbox, which is also profile important. Text. You can see okay. that the the checkbox Not has non-checked check check the name of box. the component and Double the type of toggle. component. And it it automatically attaches the double tap to toggle. So if I double tap it, check. it informs me about the change of Not the check. of the state for the checkbox. You can provide a total customized uh, text to the checked options, but for sake of simplicity, uh, I leave it like that. So I'm going to explain uh, this part. So the rolling states. We can see that this is also the a basic composable with not much uh, description, but this is the important part. By only attaching to the profile text, which is this one, the uh, we can see that by only attaching a modifier to the semantics, we attach the heading, um, I don't know, description to the modifier. It totally takes the, the name and attaches the, to the user that is a heading. It is important in order to the user to know that it's, it's reading a heading and it, it's usually the start of a really important section. For example, if you have like an account part, if you say heading in here, the user is going to know that it's a total different uh, part that it's, he is interacting with and he can like be jumping around and like being like not getting lost in the whole component. And this is the only uh, semantic modifier attached to this component. This is the one that is more complete. As we can see, we have the semantics, the heading, but also to the long text, I attached another semantic, which is invisible to the user. So basically it, instead of disappearing the whole text for the whole UI, it only make it invisible to the talkback. So this is a experimental, uh, compose uh, API class, but it's prone to change in the future. But basically, if, if uh, for at least um, during this state of compose, if you want some text, some text component or something that you don't really want to the user to be read aloud, you can make it invisible to the user and it's going to be fine by accessibility. Uh, this maybe this doesn't make a lot of sense for the long test because you you may you may think like it's important to the user to know it right but there are certain components for, like for example using some kind of decorator images or something to make it pretty sometimes the talkback uh, focuses on it because it thinks it has important data but if you attach the invisible to user to it it's going to disappear for the talkback and we get to the checkbox so this is the, as you can see, it's uh, only a row with the text and the checkbox. This is an important part. Uh, if I do, if I comment this uh, clearance and semantics, it's, you are going to see why it's important to sometimes apply clearance and semantics to, to composables. I think, ah, uh, yeah. So, Let's go back to this. As you can see, uh, the now it it focus pierce the whole thing, and now it focus the checkbox alone. Which, as as we saw in the in the important rules about composable, it's always to take care of the of the focus. Because if it is again in a whole long list, such as a 
lazy list is going to be tired tiring for the user to be jumping about the option not check, not and check, the checkbox the not, option like the checkbox, checkbox and it's very repetitive and it's very toggle tiring and also not informative so sometimes we need to basically uh clear all the semantics available to the nodes set our own semantics as you can see i'm attaching the option checkbox and now we can samsung gmail microsoft apps make, store, ah, double tap to you are crazy button. so Image yeah button. as you can see now not we checked. have uh, not checked checkbox. our uh, we have double the state the name that we provided by the semantics the type of component and the double top to toggle it and as we can see we made the row checkable so we gave it the role we gave it the role of checkbox in order to inform the the checkbox client that it's a checkbox it um, can be double tapped to toggle to toggled and it's current value and basically uh, this is like the um very simple uh, example about TalkBack, but I will say that in day-to-day, uh, -day, this is the things that I use the most. There are more complex things. There are a lot of, as in everything you can make, uh, when you have a very complex screen, you have to play a lot with the modifiers, with the semantics, with the clearance and semantics, because sometimes you want certain components to be, uh, like joint or not for example one of the things that i really use clearance and semantics it's when using i have had experience with the stars for example rating stars and usually you have like five stars out of five i don't know and there are different icons like five different stars if you don't really treat the semantics and merge the the, the components of that kind of stuff each each on and every one of the star is going to be read aloud. So that's very tiring. That doesn't make sense for the user. So if you uh, provide uh, custom semantics to it, you can make it a whole uh, composable uh, being read aloud to the user. And it's a lot more clear. And I think that's time. That's it for the demo. I don't know if you have some questions or any uh, doubt about the implementation or the presentation.